Now, there's a related chemistry that um, we want to just talk about here. So we just talked about the reduction of the carbonyls, which is the addition of the hydride uh, to those carbonyl compounds. Um, but we can also do the addition of organometallics. So addition of Grignards um, or organolithiums. Organolithium. Okay. So anything that's basically acts like a carbanion can be added to carbonyls. Okay. And that's going to be uh, very useful because we can convert our alkyl halides now to um, either the, the green yard uh, or um, if we were to use um, lithium metal, we could actually get to uh, the, the organolithium. So if we can get to organohalide now, we can get to these organometallics. And so now in general, uh, this really looks just the same as the hydride addition, except what we're doing in this case is we're adding um, our, our green yard or our organolithium um, to the, the carbonyl, and that is going to give us you know, that, that addition of, of formally RH across the, the carbonyl. And that is incredibly useful because now we can bring together two different um, components, right? Two different organic components. So a, a carbonyl and then this, this organo uh, metal species, and we can connect two um, larger fragments um, to make a, a, a much larger carbon framework. And so that's, that's extremely useful. Okay, so let us just very quickly talk about the details of, of this. So um, again, if I were to take an aldehyde, like hexanal, let's say, um, and I uh, treat this with, for example, ethyl grignard, and then I work that up with some acid, um, I will do a uh, very useful addition of that ethyl green yard and now I'll get to an eight carbon uh, product there. So an eight carbon uh, alcohol, okay, so very useful. Um, incidentally, okay, I could um, have a green yard uh, and I could react that with, with something very small. So this is the smallest possible aldehyde, it's formaldehyde. And this is the special case where both substituents on the aldehyde are hydrogens. Um, and if I do that, the product that I'll get out is is uh, where I've just added a single carbon as an alcohol, okay? Um, and that, that actually turned out to be a very useful uh, thing to keep in mind. Um, of course, I can also add to ketones, okay? So, right, so if I add to an aldehyde here, most aldehydes give secondary alcohols, okay, secondary. The case of formaldehyde is a special case that gives a primary alcohol. Um, if I add to a ketone, okay, and I'll just pick, I'll just pick fennel grignard in this case, um, followed by the workup. Uh, what I'll generate is this molecule. Okay, and you can see here that that is a tertiary alcohol. So addition to ketones gives us tertiary alcohols. Okay. <clears throat> and now let me just finish this off by talking about the case of the esters. So what happens in the case of the ester? Okay, let's say I've got this ethyl ester. Um, now, again, you know, we just saw what happens with the hydride. You add once, uh, remember with the hydride, you add once, you get an aldehyde, and then that's more reactive to add a second one. And the case of the organo metals are gonna be very similar. We have to have uh, two equivalents of whatever our organo metal species is, okay, followed by the workup, um, because we are going to have the same type of situation, okay? So in this case, we will add two of those equivalents of the organometal to that carbonyl, okay? And then keep in mind that we're still spitting off that alcohol. In this case, we're spitting off ethanol as that other piece that, that gets broken off. So I just wanna uh, stress this point that what we're dealing with here um, is, right, so we've got, uh, I'll just call it R, R magnesium bromide. Uh, it works the same with the lithiums too. Um, this is going to add, right, and we'll get to this type of intermediate, O ethyl, okay, and let me just put a distinguishing thing there, okay, so we've just added that R group, um, and now when this kicks out, it expels the ethoxide, okay, we get to a ketone, okay, we just kicked off ethoxide, we get to a ketone, but 
ketones again are more reactive than esters are so if you you know as soon as you form the ketone that's going to react um, even more rapidly with another equivalent of the green yard and so you really can't stop this process if you add once you're you're basically uh, sorry you're basically going to add twice okay there's no stopping that um, and that's why you need two equivalents otherwise you're just going to get a, a horrible mixture of, of uh, you know unreacted starting material mono addition and, and then dye addition so you have to have the two equivalents when you're adding to an ester and know that you're going to add twice you, you just can't do that single addition now there is a special case where you can do the the single addition uh, and it and it's a case of an amide um, I just wanted to bring that up because it is so useful um, so uh, amides are usually poorly reactive um, there for reasons we'll talk about uh, we don't we don't have to talk about it uh, too much right now but uh, so an amide is a derivative of a carboxylic acid um, and just in a, in a brief nutshell the reason that they're less reactive is because there's a resonance form um, in which the nitrogen lone pair um, actually donates into the carbonyl and it gives you this resonance form which just adds a whole bunch more electron density at the carbonyl so they're um, they're much more resistant to um, the addition of nucleophiles. You certainly can add nucleophiles, but you're really going to have to to kind of punch it. Okay. Now, there's a special derivative of of an amide, amide um, that we're going to talk about uh, just right now, um, and it's called Weinreb's amide. Okay. It's a very special amide um, that is going to be synthetically useful to us. So, what this is is it's an amide. Um, and one of the substituents on the amide nitrogen is a methyl group, and then the other one is a methoxy group. So there's an NO bond. And that actually makes this a pretty unusual character um, because if I come in with, a, a, let's say, an alkyl lithium, but it could also be an alkyl, it could be a green nerd uh, as well, um, the first addition to the amide carbonyl is going to occur. Okay, so here's my, let me put prime there, prime. All right, so I get to this intermediate. And now, as we saw with the case of the ester, um, the same thing with an amide. Normally what would happen is there would be the expulsion um, of one of these groups, so you get to the ketone. Um, and, and, uh, and so that's not actually gonna be useful. Um, but in this case, what we have is this extra oxygen um, can help coordinate. So both of these oxygens can coordinate to the lithium, okay? coordinate to the lithium and that's called a chelate right so it's like a little a little um, you know crab claw that's biting onto the lithium and that holds it pretty tightly which means that if you do this at low enough temperature that this intermediate here this whole intermediate won't break down it won't break down to reveal a ketone and so you can just sit around and you know there's nothing to to react further with right there's no electrophilic site in this molecule until this breaks down nothing can happen and so this won't break down until you work this up with acid in which case now you actually can get to the ketone product so that's why the winder amide is particularly useful is because because of this special oxygen right there um, you can do a single addition and get to the ketone um, and so that's very useful right because now you can take winder amide go to ketone and then if you want to maybe you get maybe you reduce it or maybe you add a different green yard, so you could get to a tertiary alcohol with three different substituents. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, I mean, that, that actually turns out to be very useful. Okay, the final thing that I need to say is the addition to carboxylic acids. <clears throat> okay, so we run into the same problem that we saw with reduction, that um, if we try to add, let's say, a green yard reagent uh, to this, uh, carboxylic acid um, we don't do the nucleophilic addition instead um, what we're going to get to is you know this protonated organometal species okay so that's no good uh, that's not what we want we want something that can actually add to the carboxylic acid <clears throat> and the thing that's going to save us here again is the organolithiums the lithiums can play the same trick that they did with lithium aluminum hydride which is to you know, give that covalent character to the O lithium bond. Okay, so you can now uh, add uh, multiple equivalents of that organolithium to the 
um, to the carboxylic acid. So, uh, but here's the key, right? This is what you have to keep in mind. <clears throat> How many equivalents do we need with this reagent? The first one's going to deprotonate. There's no stopping that. And then the next one is going to add to give a ketone, which is going to be more reactive. So you can't stop the second addition. So if you're counting, that's three total equivalents minimum that we need here. So three equivalents of the organolithium species. Okay. If we're going to do this directly on the carboxylic acid. <clears throat> now, maybe that's okay. Maybe it's just methyl lithium or something, but um, you know, probably the organolithium is the most expensive part of this. And so what you could do instead, right, you could instead just deprotonate your carboxylic acid first. Uh, you know, and there's, there's a number of different ways you could do that. Um, we'll just say base. <clears throat> right, so you could first deprotonate um, and then go ahead with your um, two equivalents or slightly more than two equivalents of your organolithium, um, which you have to work up then is going to give you um, that product. So that would be a way to, to save a bit of money to not have to do the three equivalents. But, you know, the, we don't have to write this extra. We could just say three equivalents because on paper everything is free. Okay. All right. So that's, those are the ways that we have to synthesize alcohol. So now you know how to make them. Now you know how to react them. Um, and so we can now in, install um, all of this alcohol chemistry into our synthetic toolbox. And we should be able to start to make some pretty complicated molecules at this point.